What's up YouTube? My name is Bill Slinton and today we're going to be going over track preparation inside Pioneer's record box software in three segments. The focus for today is efficiency. In the first segment, I'm going to show you how to use built-in hotkeys so that you can speed up your workflow and spend less time in the software preparing your tracks and more time doing what it is that you'd rather be doing, playing music. In the second segment, I'll show you how you can fix the beat grid so you can make sure that you're playing your tracks in proper time and you can make use of the CDJ's sync functionality. Lastly, I'm going to show you how you can utilize intelligent playlists and a tagging system so that you can more easily and efficiently create playlists for yourself now and down the road. Let's get into it. All right, I've already gone ahead and loaded in some new tracks into Rekordbox. As you can see, the tracks below here already have memory cues set for them, and the ones above don't have any except for the one that are automatically created by Rekordbox. What you want to do is make sure that your collection or the playlist that you're working inside is sorted by date added. That way, the newest songs that you added to that playlist or collection appear in order at the top like so. Next thing you want to do is come over here and change this to 16 beats. We'll get into why in a moment. Something else that you might want to do is press Command 7 or click this drop down menu and select one player view. That's the view that I am currently working in. Next, double click the first song to add it to the player. The hotkeys that we're going to use for this segment are spacebar to play pause the track inside player one, C to set a cue point, M to store that cue point as a memory cue, X can also be used to delete that memory cue, one, two, and three to store hot cues A, B, and C. The left and right arrows can be used to skip forwards and backwards by increments of 16 beats as we already established right over here in this drop down menu. Command down to skip to the next track and command up to go to the previous track in the playlist. And the letters across the row here from A to semicolon can be used to jump to memory cue points 1 through 10 as you store them. So the way that I go about setting my cue points for a song is like so. We're going to use the, the left and right arrows to jump from the first downbeat of the song, which we can see is already selected, and go here and press C for cue point, or Q rather, and then M to store it to memory. So you can see it now stored it here. And we can jump ahead by increments of 16 beats, like so. And set all of your memory cues to points where you want. You can verify. Uh, I don't like that one, so I'm going to press X probably there. Let's see if I go back 16 beats and hit play. So that's the drop right there. I like to have a cue point set 32 beats before so that if there's another song uh, mixing in from then uh, you can sort of make the, the drops happen at the same time and you can, you can flip the track. Um, if you want to set your hot cues, um, maybe you would set your hot cue A here by pressing 1, hot cue B maybe here, or whatever you want. You can, put, you can even put it a hot cue and a memory cue in the same position. Now you press command down to go to the next track and start the process over again. 
to verify that that's where the drop is. Okay, that's correct. Now, like I said before, set all your, cube, your memory cues where you like to have them. Um, these are sort of the places where I like to put them. And again, you can set your hot cues if you like. Like so. Um, now that we have uh, multiple memory cues set over here, like I was saying, you can use A to go to the first memory queue, S to the next one, D, F, and so on. Alternatively, you can use letters N and B to go forwards and backwards between your memory cues. The last thing I want to show you before moving on to the next segment is how to set a loop memory queue. These are loops that are stored in a similar way as memory cues, and they can be set in a way so that when the track reaches that point in the song, a loop automatically turns on for you. You might use this for a special routine you're preparing for, or you just know you'd like to mix out of the song at that moment every time. For example, drop two sucks, and you loop a section of the breakdown after drop one. So if we come over to say here, and we turn on a loop, we can turn on the loop by clicking this button. That's eight beats. Let's increase it to 16. As you can see, that's a nice uh, amount of time to loop around. So if I hit play. As you can tell, it sounds like a good loop, something you could very easily mix over. And now that we have the loop turned on, you simply press M on your keyboard and it stores it over here and this little symbol indicates that it is a loop. The last thing you want to do is hover over this where it says set active loop. Right now it is an inactive loop which means it's stored there and there's a way to turn it on when you're playing with the CDJs uh, I can't recall which button you press to make it turn on, but if we turn this set active loop button to the on position, then when the song comes across this point in time, the loop will automatically turn on like so. As you can see, the loop turned on and it is just going to continue looping until you either turn the loop off or you know mix out of the song. Once you become really familiar with all the hotkeys on your keyboard, your workflow begins to get really fast. Let me show you what it looks like when I do it. As you can see, I was able to add hot cues and memory cues quite efficiently without ever having to really touch my mouse at all. Okay, now let's look at how you can fix an incorrect beat grid. 
I've loaded up a new song. As you can see here, the grid is looking a little bit funky. Uh, if we go over to the drop, like nothing is landing at, at the transient markers here or here or here. It's, it's kind of all over the place. So uh, what I'm going to do is come over to the first downbeat. Let's just have a listen. So right here looks like a good point. Let's go over to grid view. Um, and you can either hit this button and it's going to set your um, set the set the first beat of the bar to the current position but once we start changing this value or using uh, this to shrink the beat intervals or increase the beat intervals uh, it sort of <coughs> does it from the beginning of, of the song and it's going to move this marker if you see here it's shifting this marker. I don't want that to shift because I, I know that marker is where, where I wanted it. So we're going to put it back there and we're going to hit this button and it's going to change from here forward. So now let's have a listen and we're going to make adjustments to um, this tempo of the song using these buttons while we listen. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, I adjusted it to 115. We'll just round it off there quickly. And we'll listen more. And what you can do is, as the, the beat grid, if it's off a little bit, it'll get more and more out of time as you go further down the song. So let's just quickly verify. Okay, sounds good. So now uh, we use this button further on here. Uh, as you can see, it's the lines are, are not straight through. Um, we're going to just set a Q marker here because we know that that's good. And then use the left arrow to go back in increments of 16. And right there is where you should be mixing in your song if you're syncing it with uh, another song. Um, and we'll just get rid of this first one and then also click this all right now that we've established how you can quickly and efficiently set your hot cues and your memory cues and when you run into it from time to time you'll have to fix the beat grid let's move on to the third segment where I show you how to organize your music quickly and efficiently into intelligent playlists Okay, first thing you're going to want to do is open up this tag window, my tag configuration window. As you can see, I already have established some tags for myself. Um, some of these are made up. Maybe they won't make sense to you. Some of them are, are genres. This one's openers, like openers and closers. Uh, really, it's up to you. Uh, the the it's limitless what the, the things that you can do here. You just hit this plus button and you can create yourself a new tag. After you've created uh, all the tags that you think you're going to want to need, um, you come over here and you create new intelligent playlist. <clears throat> you set all these values so that they match something like, like this we edit this one that I've already created my tag contains deep dub that that new new um, and then you want to name it what the tag is so now all the songs in my collection that I tag with those tags so if I select this it's going to automatically take this song and put it into this playlist for me. So as you're going down through your music, select 
all the tags that applies to that song and it's going to automatically put them into these playlists for you. Uh, if you wanted to get even more technical with it, um, you could say, uh, let's say this, uh, this is my playlist of, of general music. This is like everything that I would want to play in my DJ set currently. Mostly what's in here is like songs that are, are two years old or less. So what I could do is I can create a new tag call it general, general two years, whatever you want, right? And now that we're in this playlist, if I press command A to select all and go like this, now they're all gonna get that tag, give it a moment. And now what you can do is you can come back over to your intelligent playlist and ideally you would, would have set this up the first time around instead of coming around and doing it um, like I am now. Edit intelligent playlist, add a condition, my tag contains general two year, there it is. match all the following conditions. So this means that it needs to have this genre tag plus the general tag, which essentially means that I want all the deep dub music that exists in this general playlist to occur here. So now when you're DJing, and let's say you're in a segment of, uh, you just played a trap song, and you want to continue to play all your trap music, you can just scroll to this smart playlist, or intelligent playlist rather, and play trap music. And then when you're tired of playing trap music, you can turn the rotary knob in your browse and switch to another genre. If you don't want to be genre specific, well then you can just go to the general playlist and you can pick and choose from all your genres. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and useful today that's going to help you speed up your workflow and get you playing music faster. I've gone ahead and created a cheat sheet for you, which you can keep on your desktop or you can print it out and use it for a quick reference while you're learning all of the hotkeys. I've even included a, a couple of hotkeys in there that uh, I didn't include in this lesson that I think are useful. You can download it for free by clicking the link below. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section and I'll be sure to reply to all of your questions and comments there. I'm Bill Slinton. Thanks for watching. See you next time.